In this episode, we're going to look at cutting out the original chassis rails and fabricating some new ones. And then from those new chassis rails, tying them into the car body and remounting the subframe. So I've cut out some more of the bulkhead now so that the engine is actually in. Took the gearbox off, no sump off, and the engine is in. Now it's really a case of starting to put some metal back in. Obviously, we don't have any of the strut tower for the front yet or any of the upper A-arm mounts. They are going to come at a bit of a later date. And I've decided that we are going to get rid of these original chassis rails. Because I've already done the work in working out where the subframe goes and at the height it goes, etc., I don't really want to undo that work or have to do it again. So I'm going to have to be a little bit clever about how we go about removing the chassis rail or as much of the chassis rail as we can without disturbing those mounts, welding those mounts to the new chassis rails and then cutting the rest of the existing chassis rail out. I hope that makes sense. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start cutting out the bulkhead and not, because we've cut most of it out, I'm going to start cutting a nice um, kind of, I'm going to give myself a, a nice flange to work to, to weld the new bulkhead onto. Again, I might cut a, more out at, at, at a later date to fabricate the bulkhead in a different way, but I think this way will work just fine for now. I also want to remove the there's the, some kind of strengtheners that were part of the chassis rails that are going down on the floor. I had to cut those out to get the rear of the bell housing in, but they are left running under the floor. So that's another thing I want to do. I want to get those existing chassis rails cut off from under the floor and get the whole floor cleaned up so that when we drop that new box section chassis rail in, there's nothing stopping us, everything's prepped, and we can just go ahead and start welding it all straight up. So yeah, really the first thing to do is pull the engine back out again, get the subframe off and start cutting out loads of more material and uh, cleaning it all up ready for a new box section chassis rail. Right, so I've got a load more of the bulkhead chopped out and neatened it up to some extent. It'll still want neatening, I imagine, as we begin to put more of the bulkhead back in. But the, the, the challenge we're really looking at now is trying to get these chassis rails sorted out. So again, originally we were gonna try and use the original chassis rails, which, which was doable, but given how much we're having to cut out of the inner wing, it left not a lot of strength at the top and we were going to be cutting into the original chassis rails quite a lot in order to accommodate the strut, um, yeah, the, the Jaguar strut. So we made the decision to go for new chassis rails and, and this is kind of what we've come up with. This is pretty much what we're going to do. At the minute, I've got three pieces here. I've got two pieces in my hand, but there's another piece on the floor. And what we're going to do is we're going to have that something like that. So this section it runs parallel with the other side and then it kind of edges off to the side and that'll allow us to pick up both suspension uh, both subframe mounting points that we've already put in but will also allow us to keep the width we need for the stock radiator and just neaten it all up and strengthen it all up so I'm going to get these cleaned up because it's quite rusty this steel um, it's just surface rust, but I'll get it cleaned up. I'm going to TIG weld this and then the, um, the down bit um, on, the, on the bench. I'm going to TIG weld these together to create this, this kind of chassis rail. And then once I've done that, it's a case of putting them on the car. And again, for now, just, just doing some really decent and substantial tacks on this front cross member and then the two subframe mounting points. Once I've done that, we can start to try and attach it to the car body on the floor. And we'll go over how we're gonna do that once I've got all this sorted, because it's probably started, I mean, it's only just in my head. I can only just imagine it in my head. So it's probably even harder to try and visualize watching at home. So that's what we're gonna do. Get these bits cleaned up, get them welded together and start cleaning up the floor ready to actually accept this new, uh, this new chassis rail. So 
So we've got the chassis legs or the first part of the chassis legs cut and welded, cleaned all these up because they were quite heavily surface rusted. Um, I'll probably end up um, sanding these down a bit more before I kind of paint them. Uh, I'll try to get into the habit of uh, acid etch priming everything uh, before it gets kind of sealed and just to, just to help prevent rust in the future. Um, not that I'm too worried about that on this car. It's never going to look uh, never going to look amazing. Um, but I've got this plate cut out, so I've, I've cut those strengtheners off of the floor now. So obviously the floor's gone very floppy. That doesn't matter because I'm going to weld in a, a three mil plate. This probably seems really overkill, um, and it probably is. But we've cut quite a lot of strength out of the car, and this is going to be the start of starting to put some of that back in. So this is going to go under the floor and I'm going to screw it, to hold it in for now. And then what I'll do is I'll plug weld all of these old spot welds back in. So that'll be really nice and solid and we'll have a real solid piece of floor. It'll probably still be a little bit flexible because other than the, the bit of floor it's in, there's nothing to kind of, kind of strengthen it yet. Um, but, it, but it'll be more than good enough for now. So once that's in, I can then think about getting these in the correct position, um, you know, so that they're the correct position side to side and forward and back. And then what we'll have is we'll have this piece that drops down. This is kind of where I was getting to earlier and it being a bit too difficult to explain. That'll drop down from the chassis leg like that. And then there'll be another piece which runs from that flat we're going to weld under the floor like that and that'll tie those two together and then that'll hopefully tie the chassis legs into the floor and that'll be the start of yeah starting to put some strength back into this now we'll probably also tie the chassis leg up to the top temporarily um, and then maybe up to the top of the scuttle panel as well just so that when i cut this chassis leg out we don't want any movement at the front of the car we want to make sure the bonnet fits well and well as well as it ever will do on an Aston Princess. Um, so yeah, like we're at the point of starting to put some heavy stuff back in now, which is quite a nice point to be at. We've still got quite a lot to do, but hopefully you can start to see it coming together now. Um, and yeah, and it'll be nice to cut this section out and get rid of you know the, the messiness that we created trying to use the original chassis legs and then it'll all just be nice new stuff from then on. Right, we've got those two um, strengthener plates, I guess, welded into the floor. Now, I'm not sure how needed they're gonna be, but I had to take out those original um, strengthener plates because they didn't run far enough back and they were in the way. That left me with loads of holes in the floor from drilling out the spot welds. Well, the easiest way of drilling that spot welds so i could have done anything underneath and had no holes in the floor but i decided to just weld in some more bits of three mil plate again a bit more weight in the car but i'm really not worried about how heavy the car is going to come out and it gives us a really nice platform to weld the first section of the chassis leg onto so i've got the first section of the chassis leg welded on and then cut and mitered another piece to weld onto that chassis leg piece that sits in the engine bay and now tacked it all together. And I can already feel that the front of the car has become a lot stiffer again, I guess. Um, so now it's pretty much a case of just getting the other side to this stage, which again, I've got both plates welded in, so it's just a bit more uh, mitering and TIG welding on the bench. We need to get some form of cross brace welded in under the dashboard brace the chassis legs up to that and then we should be free to cut out all of that original chassis leg and get the subframe bolted back in right so we've now got both chassis legs in on both sides fully attached to the floor fully attached to the front of the car and attached to those subframe mounts now everything is still again a little bit temporary um, it's not 100 percent as it will be um, i've probably said that loads of times but I'm just trying to reiterate that we're still at the very early stages of kind of sculpting the front of the car but the stage we're at now is that we need to add some triangulation into these chassis rails because the floor is a big flat sheet 
with no bulkhead in place, it, it will just bend up and down. And if we cut these chassis legs out now, these original chassis legs, really there's nothing stopping the front of the car hanging on the front of those chassis legs, just bending up and down with the floor. We need to tie that up into the, um, the kind of upper scuttle panel dashboard rail area. So we've got a piece going from side to side on the car um, tied into like the A pillars, which is a really strong section of the car. So obviously the weight of the door hangs off it. Um, and it's where a lot of the, the kind of structure goes through the car is on those A pillars. So what we'll do is we'll reinforce those. Again, we'll get some more three mil plate welded in on those A pillars. And then we'll have a piece of box section which comes across from both sides to allow us to come down onto the chassis rails. The problem is we can't just go straight across because obviously the engine's going to be in the way. That's why we've had to cut so much of the bulkhead out. If we hadn't have had to cut so much of the bulkhead out, we wouldn't be in this situation. But we have, so we've got to kind of make a bent piece of box section, which we can do. We'll just cut and mitre it to get something that kind of goes up and over where the engine will be and then ties into the side of the car. Once we've got that fixed in place, we can add some more pieces of box section that come down from that rail onto the chassis legs and that should then be solid enough for us to cut those original chassis legs off. So I've got some bits of plate tacked into the car, it's a bit of a boring job so we haven't, haven't filmed that, we've done a lot of plate cutting and uh, welding recently and trying to make these videos a bit more exciting than just me cutting out bits of plate and tacking it onto the car. But I've also got this piece of box section cut and mitered um, which will hopefully give us the clearance to go over the engine. Now it's not quite perfect yet, I'm going to need to adjust it, again I was kind of working off imagination. Sometimes until you can get something in place you can't see exactly how it'll come out and that's, that's kind of the case with this. I've got this tacked together and now that I've done that I can kind of see that if I adjusted it a little bit it would, it would be quite a bit better. So we'll get this in under the bulkhead, it's quite tricky to see but we'll do our best um, and then hopefully we can get this tacked in after a bit of adjustment. Right, so this is where the bar goes. I want it to go between the A pillars side to side. Now, what I've kind of uh, established from making up this kind of first draft, I guess, is that I need this to go a little bit higher. and I, I, I need a kind of bigger kink in it. I need it to go higher up um, and I need it to be a bit wider, really. Um, because I can't try the subframe and engine back in yet, I don't know if there's going to be enough clearance, so I'm going to have to make it bigger, the, the kind of kinked section, than I would like it to be. That way, there should definitely be enough clearance. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to adjust this, and then hopefully we can get that tacked in. Once this is tacked and welded in, um, we can start looking at those braces that go down. Right, so we've got these chassis rails welded in with the brace bar and the crossbar all welded in now. Um, and even just doing that, it's added in quite a lot of strength. Obviously, we had cut out quite a lot of stuff to, the, to that point. Um, so now, what we want to do, I've not gone too crazy cutting around the um, original subframe mounts that I'd welded in. What I want to do now is get the original mounts uh, bolted back onto the subframe and then use the subframe just like we did before as a jig to get them welded in cleaned up nicely all the crap that's around the outside ground off that we don't need anymore tidy up the inner wings a bit more um, and then we can begin to think about one or two things either mounting the strut tops and the upper arms or cutting the rest of the floor out ready for the gearbox tunnel and potentially the prop shaft. Um, I'm tempted to go for gearbox and prop shaft first, um, although that would be a lot easier with the car in the air. We can't get the car in the air realistically until it's on its wheels. It's been much easier to move it. Um, so I think I'll probably go for getting the strut tops and upper arms mounted next. But yeah, really is just getting that subframe back bolted in now, getting everything welded up nicely, getting everything cleaned up, and then we can start to actually build some stuff on top of nice new metal, which is a lot easier 
um, and we can make everything nice and square and true and get everything mounted solid. We've got those chassis rails mounted now. So the next thing to do is to get those jigs bolted back in and start looking at how we're gonna construct those strut towers and mount in the upper arms. If we can get those all mounted to the new chassis rails, we can then start to get the thing on its wheels and that'll, that'll be a really nice moment to get to. So thanks for watching. Um, any feedback you've got or any comments you wanna leave, just put them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer your questions.